Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Scourge of War Gettysburg, a 2010 wargaming classic, in my opinion still the best representation of the Battle of Gettysburg in any war game. I think there are better games per se, Scur uh, Sid Meier's Gettysburg is probably a better game, uh, you could certainly make the case for Ultimate General Gettysburg, but if you're looking for the best representation of the battlefield of Gettysburg and refighting the scenarios or the battle or the engagements that occurred there and looking for the closest thing that resembles an actual simulation of that battle uh, in sort of fidelity and realistic tactics and realistic unit maneuvers then I think this is the closest it comes to uh, you know any any game recreating the battle of Gettysburg. This is the second part of the second scenario in the game. Uh, this is looking at uh, the Battle of McPherson's Hill, I guess, Ridge, Farm, whatever. It's kind of all over there. Uh, and we are commanding General Henry Heath's division of Hill's Corps in the Confederate Army, fighting against the Union forces here, which are the first division of the first corps. Uh, we've already largely routed General Cutler's uh, Brigade of New Yorkers, and we are now facing off against the Iron Brigade, which has sort of turned the tables on us on our right flank, putting some serious pressure on Archer's Brigade, and uh, we are trying to get Davis's Brigade on our left uh, to, to push in the, the Union flank enough to be able to come save Archer, but we'll see how things play out. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel from a couple of days ago, so if you guys are interested in following uh, these types of things live, you can check me out there. We usually stream in the evenings, uh, somewhere between 8.30 to 9 o'clock, sometimes 10 o'clock when we start, uh, and typically play pretty much what you see on this channel. Sometimes there's a few different things. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in. All of this talking has just been looking at gameplay that we saw in the last video. Uh, as of this moment, when I stop talking here, uh, we're going to transition to the live stream and pick things up exactly where we left things off. Oh, I almost forgot. If you are wondering, Scourge of War is developed by Norbsoft Dev. Uh, that is the successor studio to Mad Minute Games, uh, which made the Take Command series, which this is very much a successor to. Uh, it is published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. The game is not on Steam. Uh, there's a link in the description if you're interested uh, to the Matrix Steam store page where you can find this. You can either buy Gettysburg as a standalone game if you're interested. I don't get paid anything. Not I don't benefit in any way if you do that. But just in case you're wondering, uh, the game uh, is available either as a standalone with the 30 scenarios that come with the Battle of Gettysburg, or you can... Um, play or you can buy the DLCs individually for Antietam, Chancellorsville, Brandy Station, and Pipe Creek, or um, there's also a collector's edition which bundles that all together. Anyway, so the link to Gettysburg and then also the link to the collector's edition are in the description. And now, without further ado, let's get into the game. All right, so you're going to fire in the second Wisconsin, which is now here, I believe. And then we might be able to get the 5th Alabama Battalion along their flank. Oh boy. Are these guys routing, or are they charging into me? I think they're routing, so we might capture the uh, 147th as well, if they feel they have nowhere to retreat to. There you go, boys. Okay, so 14 Tennessee's pulled back. That should prevent me from being flanked for now. First Tennessee will fire into the flank of the second Wisconsin. Fifth Alabama is going to shred pretty quick, probably. It says they're in the open. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be on that fence line. One thing I really miss from Ultimate or from Ultimate General is the way units click in defensive into defensive terrain. Like this should be on a fence line, but they're in the open, so they're not getting the bonus. And I don't know what to do about it. Okay, let's pause for a second here. So, where are you at, Heath? 1300. I don't know that we're going to get a major victory because of losing all that artillery. That's a pretty tough blow. Where did the Federal Brigade go that was routing? Somehow they routed through our lines. Oh, well. Okay. 
right, you're going to have to close the range really quick. Get up to the edge of the cut. We could use reinforcements. So we got a little bit of an artillery duel going coming here, going here. I don't think they can see the 42nd Mississippi, which is protecting them from getting hit at the moment. need to bring more of these guns up to help first the Iron Brigade, but... Maybe you're past the fence. Maybe that's why. Or at least get back into the field where you've got a little bit of cover. They are firing on these guns, which didn't see them until they were right on top of them. So, yeah, they may eat a canister round or two, but this gun's going to rout, I think. All right, push past the railroad cut. One positive here is I don't think the first Tennessee is taking too much fire. One thing that is different with this game, as opposed to a lot of other games that came before it, is that units can fire at multiple enemy units at the same time. So um, that is a nice functionality, I would say. Right, that enemy gun routed. Or at least pulled back. These guys are limbering up as well. There you go. So Davis's brigade is advancing on the farm. Let's get through that cut as quickly as we can on the double boys. Some of the troops are still fresh. I think I had the 55th set to double the whole time. We can set the leader to gallop as well. guys are still in the open. Jesus Christ. Oh, nice. So, even though the first ten, or this battalion here, the 5th Alabama Battalion, just got routed, it looks like one of the Iron Brigade's units here, the 2nd Wisconsin, is not doing so hot. You can see their cohesion is falling. I don't think they were set to advance. It might be breaking. Maybe that's a bunch of artillery aimed at them. I'm not sure. Let's also bring this battery forward. Well, I probably want to wait until after we clear that gun out of the out of the road there. Sun Lake, thanks for the follow. All right, so we are firing into the flank of the M Michigan boys here. These guys are firing on that. Uh, Artillery Battalion. That was a canister shot. All right. I don't think this battery is going to last long. Meanwhile, we do have the flank of these Michigan troops. Are they charging me? How many rounds of canister are you going to get off before you route? Fuck. All right, let's push the artillery forward here into this field. Now that their guns aren't facing me. We could charge them. But they are taking casualties. Are they withdrawing by recoil? That gun flew way back. 
We're, we might be in double canister range. I'm not sure. Yep, we routed them. Hell yeah, boys. All right, now engage the Michigan troops. And bring your artillery forward. Because as much as I want to deal the Federals a blow here, the Iron Brigade is flanking me, and the 14th Tennessee isn't doing so hot. We're getting pushed back here by the 6th Wisconsin on my right. I would just say hold to the last. I don't have a brigade commander for him, though, do I? Let's let's pause here. Well, I, I can't, actually. So, Archer's Brigade, where's their commander? Colonel Isaac Sorley? Where the hell are you, boy? Sorley, where are you? Oh, you're back here. Okay, well, get up there and give him a command bonus. Archer was captured, yep. Or it's story, not sorely. I was thinking it was like uh, General uh, Longstreet's guy, sorely. They'll get a command bonus if I get their commander close enough to him. A leader gallop, please. Okay, nice. So even though my right flank is breaking, and the 6th and 7th Wisconsin are going to break it, it looks like the second Wisconsin is not in great shape. And once I get this artillery fire into position, or this artillery into position, I mean, they're going to be in a world of hurt. Because their backs are turned to my guns. I'm going to fire canister into the rear. Get at it, boys. Meanwhile, 55th North Carolina is doing okay. They're taking a bit of a beating. Almost 100 casualties. Second Mississippi is doing okay as well. Ammunition counts look okay. We've only used about a quarter of our ammo up here. All right, go ahead and fire from that fence line. Rip to the 24th, Michigan. And then I think these eight, seven or eight guns will stop any advance from these Union troops on our right. Bad day to be in the 1st Division. Also bad day to be in uh, Archer's Brigade. But worst day to be in the first division. No valid targets? Who are they shooting at? Oh, they're going to wreck my artillery. Don't do that. They fell back out of the range. Somehow we don't have line of sight on them. Maybe because of whatever this pond is here. Yeah, it looks like they're firing on three of our guns here. As we try and unlimber and get into position. All right, so we got the 14th Tennessee's commander closer, so their morale, I think, went up slightly. All right, you're inside 100 yards. Just let them have it, boys. There we go. Canister right amongst them, and there they go. Both of these regiments routing in turn. They take casualties while they retreat as well, by the way. 14th Tennessee appears to have routed at the same time. So again, bad day to be. First Tennessee's on the fence. Okay, good. So some of these Federals are going to advance across open ground to get to them. Meanwhile, Davis, just get your brigade in line formation up here and have at it. Get up and take the objective, too. Right, where are those other guns? So whatever's left of the Iron Brigade, my goal is going to be to savage them with artillery. So they're going to swing around here, but we're going to have like a dozen guns or so. And then we've got a full brigade, so it's going to be their choice of what they want to what they want to deal with. So you can see the first Tennessee is, for the moment, okay behind this fence line. And then we've got four guns already in canister range, or close. One of them is, I guess. The other ones are probably blocked. So let's actually move some of these guns over here to the flank. So they're going to fire on those troops.
All right, so we are taking this position. Ten, nine. You can see the flag is switched over to the Confederates. We don't need to have all of you guys just wait for the objective to fall. I don't see any more federal guns either. All right, so it looks like this is a constant counter. We get points for every minute we hold the objective. So we're just gonna move the 42nd. And then the 55th up into the enemy rear. First Tennessee's morale is still good. They're behind this fence line here, so some protection. They're firing at the 7th Wisconsin, which is in the open, not behind the trench line. They might be in an orchard, I can't tell. I think it's open. Nine at, uh, so inside 100 yards, in the open, 156 uh, six muskets versus a lot more. Well, we've also got some canister firing to their, uh, to their aid. And now we've also moved some of our artillery over here to the flank. We might be taking some casualties here. But to the flank of our infantry here. Oriel, I do have the 55th North Carolina set to run. Yes, that is true. Actually, all of them on the right there were set to run to try and get me into contact sooner. Now the... First Tennessee is also taking fire from the 6th Wisconsin. This fourth gun appears to have eight casualties, still seven men in action. I don't think we're actually taking fire right now. Yep, canister fire into the enemy. So we've got the 42nd up and supporting now as well. First Tennessee's weary, but with all the support, they're hanging in there. They've got their colonel right behind him as well. Second Mississippi is holding the objective for Davis, so he's racking up points. And the 7th Wisconsin's about to get hit by the 55th North Carolina from behind. They're already breaking, so we'll hold and get a good volley in. And then our artillery should shift to take on the 6th uh, Wisconsin in the woods there. So I would imagine 500 muskets firing into your rear will cause you to break if you're already wavering. Meanwhile, Henry Heath watching it all unfold is pretty happy, I would imagine. Sitting at 2,400 score, we need to get to 4,000 for a major victory. <laughs> this must be sad for me tearing up the Iron Brigade. I'm an Iron Brigade man, what can I say? Oh, they're meleeing those crazy sons of bitches and my troops are exhausted so that's not going to go over great I'm just hoping their morale is so low that they can't fight effectively the enemy's morale yep looks like they already shifted out of melee to run okay so we routed them Hey boys, switch your fire to the 6th Wisconsin. I don't know why you're not lim unlimbered, but you should. You should unlimber. Six is in woods. I don't know how much... I don't think they've really fought much. So I think their morale is going to be okay. Do you hear some guns firing canister? No, don't. Don't get so close. Yeah. I don't want you to really die. So, retreat by recoil. Because I don't want you at 140 yards. you got to be outside 160 so you can hit them with canister, but they can't shoot back. Do routed units count for score? You do get some bonuses. So, like, if I shoot up routed units, yes, that still counts for score. 
if I route an enemy unit, I also get additional points. So like that artillery piece, well, they're pulling back. They still have a good score, so I don't think they routed. But when a unit does route, you get a negative score in addition to the casualties suffered. So it's gonna be close, I think. I think we gotta get to 4,000. I think we have about 10 minutes left. And we're sitting at about 3,300. Are we getting 100 or 300 for every minute now instead of just 100? Huh. 24th Michigan of the Iron Brigade, I think, has rallied back out here. And actually, the 6th Wisconsin appears to be pulling out. I don't know if they were routed or if they just decided the situation was untenable. In any event, let's push the 55th up to this fence. And uh, I think there you have it, boys. Tidy up our position a little bit. Move some artillery forward here. Store, you can secure the right flank. We'll keep these two guns on your right. But I think they're pulling back. Or are they pushing forward? I can't tell. Canteen Boy, thanks for the follow. Maybe they're actually pushing forward? Right, you guys are going to have to get to the frickin' fence, because if you get engaged in the open and they're in woods, that'll suck. Then you're probably going to melee and maybe lose. So we're going to push the first Tennessee up on the flank into the woods. Fence, halt, and engage. These guys are exhausted. Sometimes I don't understand, like, you're marching in line, why are you, like, switching your flanks there? That seems strange. Like, they get, man they get the way units look as they maneuver into position much better, I think, than um, Ultimate General. But then they do some really strange things, too. So... And you're back into open ground. So, can you advance slightly? Because the Iron Brigade's larger than... Inside 60 yards, this is a freaking nightmare. Are they turning to face the first Tennessee? I'm kind of confused by their maneuvers here. Let's move into column. So you can move more quickly. Oh shit, 24th Michigan's coming up. They want to fight again. How are we doing score-wise now? 4,200. 7th Tennessee looks like they also rallied. First Tennessee, get up on the flank. Are you guys going to shoot from there, or are you going to shoot at the uh, Michigan boys coming down your line? We actually might have more muskets than the uh, Iron Brigade here, or the 6th Wisconsin. 500 men? I don't think any Iron Brigade units have quite that many men. Also, the Michigan boys are going to be on me soon, so the 55th is going to have to turn and face them. But they can fire a volley or two into the... Uh, 6th Wisconsin. My artillery, I think, is blocked because you can't shoot through friendly lines. Or they, either that or they can't see anything. Alright, so we now have three regiments firing into the 6th for the moment. 
First Tennessee's also, or I think they were about to engage. They shifted as if they were going to. And the 24th Michigan is just in range, so they're getting in a position to begin firing volleys at us. We do have a gun here just outside of canister range. We're bringing up more. But the uh, North Carolina boys are going to have to shift their front here in a second. I think we have about five minutes left. Do ra uh, you already? Yeah, I already saw that. Yep. I don't love that I'm sitting in the open and taking way more casualties than I need to for this one regiment. And these guys are getting hit on the flank now, so maybe should shift. Got a thousand muskets pointed at the six Wisconsin, and they won't break. Goddamn wood terrain. We are well clear of the required score, though. Still waiting on those other two brigades of troops to come up, though. I like how it says that you're, you know, you've know you got most of your units in position, and you definitely don't. North Carolina, you're getting flanked. I don't think the 2nd Wisconsin or the 6th Wisconsin is going to do too much damage to you there, so let's not just let the 24th Michigan blaze away at your flank. Just took like half the uh, firepower away from the 6th Wisconsin, but. I love when you go down to ground level in this game. Just, it gives you a sense of like scale, even though like, yeah, it's not the prettiest. They are sprites, it's not 3D, but it just gives you a sense of scale for these kind of, these are just individual regiments blazing away. Like it gives you a sense of scale that Total War just doesn't do. And even, I mean, this is a small scenario. Like, you could have a total war battle with roughly this many units. But then the game has full-blown, you know, f larger divisions. It ha it has full-size core battles as well. Like, there's just nothing else like this from a Civil War game. Maybe Grand Tactician someday, but the performance issues that, I, that existed last time I played it certainly precluded it from ever delivering on that kind of an experience. Looks like the Iron Brigade's rallied, though. The 2nd Wisconsin's coming forward as well. Um, 55th, don't, don't route. We'll support you. We'll bring uh, 42nd up onto your flank. We've also got artillery that's like, should be firing canister shot at these guys. So how about you don't? pull back from this fence line see why you shouldn't have to reposition yourself there there's no reason to do that anyway um are you doing now general heath 5400 score we are well clear of the uh requirement here well we're in the open now but at least we're firing on the 24th that's moving across our front and not Bringing another unit up? The 7th Wisconsin is also rallied now? Ugh. Great story. Bring your regiments up. We got 370 men left out of uh, about a thousand man brigade. Not a good day. For what was Archer's Brigade. Davis has lost about 300 men out of 1,700, so his brigade did much better. I think these guys are now on the fence. The North Carolina boys aren't. There. Just advance into the fence line. Why do they do that every time? No, you shouldn't do that. Arg! I'm gonna lose my mind. What are they bringing a supply wagon up for?
No more objectives to take, just to hold the one. So... I guess let's speed things up a little bit. It looks like the 55th North Carolina may get pushed back. But I think the game is about to end the scenario. It did. And we scored 6,000. Hey, tea drinking owl. We're good, or at least I'm good. Um, okay, so that was a major victory for us. Uh, we won 6,000 points. We needed 4,000 to win a victory, or major victory. Battle details here. You can see that Davis's brigade um, scored 5,800 points and has 1,300 men remaining. Um, inflicted 454 casualties, lost 322. The geographic advantage of being on the Union left when the reinforcements were going to come up on the right really helped Davis out. He was able to flank the enemy out of their positions and didn't actually, like... I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say other than he, he didn't lose as many men. He didn't inflict as many casualties as maybe he could have. Uh, but at the end of the day his position allowed him to uh, to be successful there. Um, if we take a look at Isaac Story, who is of Archer's Brigade, his unit, the story is a little different. They lost 566 men, 522 enemy casualties. So they actually killed more of the enemy, uh, but uh, lost more. Now it says the strength is 371. I believe the 576, it obviously doesn't add quite up to 1100. So I, I'm guessing there's like some missing troops there, some deserters or whatever who are, who are going to come back. Because when you click on an individual unit here, you can see they had 30 KIA, 106 wounded, 23 missing. So I'm guessing like some of those troops would return to you in a follow-on battle. Um, and then uh, Archer, it says Archer deceased. Um, or maybe those were casualties inflicted before Archer fell. Because you can see... The, there's no units under Archer, but 200 casualties inflicted and taken. So maybe that maybe that's what it's accounting for. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, one of our units surrendered, too. So maybe that was that. I don't know. Anyway, we won. It was a victory. So that's good. Um, we to take a look here. We now have another score written on a battle flag. So now the third scenario uh, will be next up if we're playing through this sequentially there's 30 scenarios i think they overdid a little bit on the cavalry field scenarios like there's what 10 of these things it is a little bit much i think i mean i don't know a ton about the cavalry battle i know that custer was famous for it but um and it was important but i don't know Anyway, um, so the next battle in the list would be a brigade scenario where we would be commanding the Iron Brigade, the unit we just shattered. And then after that would come a division scenario, which would occur later in the afternoon. I believe the attack on Oak Hill up to the north, I think, uh, would be next. Now, I'm curious if we go before these day three scenarios were locked because it said we had to play the second scenario first. If I go to pick a charge, can I play it now? I can. I'm not going to play it, but I could. Um, and you see different screenshots here, by the way, because I have the different DLCs uh, and uh, whatnot installed for this. So this game, I don't really want to play as Picket, but, you know, if we wanted to, this is a pretty big scenario. <laughs> Look at all this fucking artillery. Look at all these guns. And the infantry. Look at all these guns. Oh boy. Yeah, all these guns are unlimbering. They're all gonna start firing soon. These boys as well. I just command picket, right? I don't command this whole assault. Yeah, these are my... My units. So we've got Garnett, Kemper, Lang. I don't command. He's from uh, Anderson's division. Uh, where's Armistead? Oh, is he right here? Armistead back here. I always thought Armistead had a small brigade. Two thousand men's pretty damn big. And then you've got all these other units from the other, like, Pettigrew 
which I'm assuming the reason that the game made me play the previous scenario is to see how many casualties Heath's division took to see what it would be carrying forward to the next battle. So Archer's Brigade here, you can see it has the 500 men, so the 371 plus the walking wounded and missing who returned to fight. So I'm guessing that that's where that number comes from. Pettigrew didn't fight, so that doesn't matter. You know, he's going to come in at full strength. And uh, Brockenboro uh, also didn't fight. I'm assuming... Davis is here somewhere. It's Pender's division, but anyway. Have I ever been to Gettysburg? Um, I have, yes. Uh, cliche. My first trip to Gettysburg was in uh, 2016. Felt in many ways like a pilgrimage. Um, it was it was pretty special. And then uh, I nearly killed myself. I walked 30 miles my first full day there, and I actually arrived at Gettysburg as the sun was setting. So I kind of walked around the cemetery a bit, caught sunset from the angle, and then woke up at six in the morning the next day had breakfast at the Lincoln Diner, and uh, actually it might have been earlier than that as the sun was coming up, and then walked 30 miles throughout the day. Basically walked the Union Fish Hook, and that was all I had time for that trip. Then I went back in 2019, and uh, I had two full days there, and so I, I looked at more of the Fish Hook, which I kind of caught the whole thing on the first day, and then I um, also went across the Seminary Ridge in 2019, looked at the Confederate positions. Uh, didn't really spend much time in the northern part of the field where Howard fought on day one. Um, if I were to go back, I'd want to spend some time there. And I have a friend who actually lives out near the cavalry fields now. Um, so maybe I would stay there. Anyway, we're back behind the Union position now. Here's the famous stone wall. Here's the grove of trees, Ziegler's Grove. But with that being said, that's where we're going to leave things off here. We didn't end up playing Pickett's Charge last night. We ended up jumping into the Iron Brigade scenario. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, from my stream the other night on my Twitch channel. This is Scourge of War Gettysburg. We won scenario number two as the Confederates, and we continued chugging along through the game. This has been a fun little throwback series for me. I don't know how many more of these will do, but frankly, there haven't been a ton of new games out that have really been drawing me in lately. And uh, this was something that I played a little bit of and, and kind of remembered why I think it's such a good Civil War game. It does lack some of the bells and whistle, whistles, some of the graphics of newer games, but I still think to this day it's probably the best Civil War battlefield simulator out there. With that being said, uh, please leave your thoughts below. And uh, as always, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out.